Hello, all of my brave warriors out there. Are you ready to show what you're capable of? The Battle of the Nicktoons is far from over, so it's time to show what you can do. This time, we're facing off in a winter sports competition. Much better than having a castle war, don't you think? That's right, today we're going to look at Champions of the Chill, a Nickelodeon crossover from 2014. Now this is a small minigame compilation, but it actually has a detailed history. We'll get to that in due time. For now, let's check it out. When we're met with this arcade-themed setup, we can see we have four teams to choose from. And even the music is fitting. Your choices for a team include SpongeBob SquarePants, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, The Breadwinners, and Winx Club. Now the team we're going with should be fairly obvious. As we all know, I've built my channel around SpongeBob SquarePants, covering most of its Flash games and all of its computer games, and always talking about it, so we should totally go with Winx Club. What, are you surprised? So we're then brought to a map where we can select one of four stages to compete in. We're also up against the other three teams, trying to outdo them by gathering more medals. They can be bronze, silver, or gold. And if you do really badly, you won't get any at all. Just like how it usually is when I play sports. But now if we go over to where SpongeBob is creepily smiling at us, we can check out his minigame. It's called Bikini Bottom Shootout. Oh now, with a title like that, you might expect a SpongeBob first-person shooter. Take notes, developers. But actually, it's just hockey. A lot less entertaining, I know. You're trying to shoot a puck into a net that Patrick is blocking. Little signs with plankton on them will also come up throughout the arena, so you can shoot those for bonus points. You click and drag the mouse to aim, then you release it to fire. Patrick will block most of your shots, though. It seems easy enough, but you'd be surprised. I genuinely thought I was doing a good job. I was hitting most of the targets, and it seemed like I was getting a good few in the net. But when I got my final score, I saw that I only got a bronze ranking. That took me off guard. But you go through three rounds of each minigame, trying to score a medal for each of them. The rounds end when your timer runs out. Then once you're done, you can see your scores in the bottom right corner. But... You are competing against the other teams, so they can very easily outdo you. Look, I'm getting demolished by Spongebob and the Turtles. Looks like we'll have to do something about that. Let's move on to the Turtle minigame and see if we're any better at it. So in this, you're riding a bobsled through a tunnel and collecting pizzas or running over snowmen. But watch out for obstacles. Right away, I like how this reminds me of the special stage in Sonic 2. Anything that reminds me of Sonic is okay in my book. But this is kind of hard. I thought the first stage surprised me with its difficulty, but in this one, I never do as good as I think I'm doing. Even if I feel like I hit the majority of snowmen and pizzas, I still only get bronze, if I even get a medal at all. Also, at the start, you have to rapidly click to get the bobsled moving. And for a cute little addition, the distance meter is indicated by a thermometer. Gotta love details like that. This is okay, but a bit of a challenge. So that brings us to Breadwinners. You only control Budus, but Sway Sway is right there filming you make a fool of yourself. You're going down a hill and jumping, moving the arrow keys to spin around while in the air. You have to reposition yourself when you come back down if you want to stick the landing. You go over obstacles, run over monsters for a boost, and fly over ramps to do some especially good tricks. It's a lot of fun, but I found if I play it for long enough, I start to suck. I guess you get too used to it and start getting careless. And huh? Booty Blast? No thanks, I don't need my booty blasted. I also find it funny whenever you hit these frozen slices of bread. The ice breaks and the bread falls out. It looks like a collectible. This might be my favorite so far, but Winx Club is next, so let's see what our favorite fairies have in store for us. This is actually the easiest one to understand, and the easiest overall. <laughs> Look at the face Bloom is making the entire time. What's she so happy about? So while you ski, you click on these fire orbs to collect them. They fill your magic meter. Then when you go up a ramp, you hit the space bar to fly and try to avoid obstacles. Whenever you fly higher, you use up some of your magic, so you have to use it sparingly. You can go up or let yourself fall to avoid oncoming obstacles. Then you just try to get a far distance. It's really easy to get yourself gold with this. And wait a minute. Tails? What's Tails doing here? And why is this the second Sonic reference we've seen in this? Also, Kiko is here. Hi there. And this is really easy, but it does depend on how many orbs you're able to click at the beginning. All of these are okay on their own, and they make for an interesting compilation, but we aren't finished just yet. If you look at this NES controller up in the corner, you can see that we have the option to enter a code. 
All the codes are random combinations of numbers, but they unlock new features that shake up each of the games. For one of them, you unlock the SpongeBob Spread Shot. This allows you to shoot three pucks at once during Bikini Bottom Shootout. It's handy, but doesn't make too much of a difference most of the time. Another code unlocks TMNT Takedown. This allows the turtles to stretch their weapons out, hitting bonuses that aren't directly in front of them. Again, it's nice to have the feature, but it rarely makes too big of a difference. Another code unlocks the Breadwinner's Invincible Springboard, which before I show footage of, I have to give a bit of a warning. It does induce flashing colors in the background, so if you need to look away, you can look back at the screen while I say this phrase right here. Alright, so here it is. The screen flashes bright colors, which is extremely distracting and kind of hard to look at, but I guess you have an invincible springboard. Whoopee. It really doesn't make much of a difference. But the last one is actually the most useful of them all, and it's for the easiest minigame. The Winx Club one will let you collect fire orbs in the air, so you can gain magic even after using some of it. You'll be unstoppable with this code. So you can use the Winx Club minigame to gather easy gold medals, but the other teams are still strikingly good at this. They're always either beating me or close to beating me, even when I think I'm doing my best. You know what this means. We have to amp up our game. We can't let SpongeBob, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turds, Butt Juice, and Swaggity Swoo outdo us. We have to show once and for all that we possess the true magic of Winx. So get ready to give it everything you've got. Here we go! That was a lot of fun. Let's see how we're doing now. Ugh, are you kidding me? How hard is this game? So as you can see, there is one final area that we can't exactly reach. We're just not up to snuff here. So let me give my iteration of what I think this area looks like. Yeah, that seems accurate. Just kidding, it's actually this. Hooray! So that's all there is to see for the mini-games, but there's actually even more to talk about. You see, this is only one version of this game. It was later updated in 2017 to fit the shows that were airing on Nickelodeon at the time. Games on Nick.com would do things like this every so often, so let's see what changes they made. First of all, since Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles was drawing to a close, they decided to swap them out for Loud House characters instead. They changed the snowmen too, but kept the pizzas. I guess it was fitting enough. One of the few Loud House episodes I've ever seen was about pizza. And Breadwinners ended in 2016, so rather than replacing them with characters from a new show, they brought in Sandy and Larry instead. They even made Sandy a selectable team. Now Larry's running after you and filming you doing your flips. The frozen breads are now frozen acorns, and the usual obstacles are jellyfish now. In a way, this change feels oddly natural, even if Larry might seem like a weird character choice for this. But finally, for the most unforgivable change of all, the most gut-wrenching change they could have made to this game, they decided to replace Winx Club. With Henry Danger nonetheless, you don't deserve to make that happy face. You'll never be her. Tails is gone too, the most tragic removal of them all. And you grab gumballs instead of fire orbs. Okay then. So now that I've been thoroughly disappointed, I think it's time to close things out. So, what do we think about this little collection? Well, it's alright. A small collection of fun little games you can play to pass the time. If you like the shows, it's nice to play as the characters, too. I like the art style and the music, and some of the games can really keep you interested. Some of them can be deceptively difficult, but at least it gives you a reason to keep playing. It also keeps track of your progress so you can continue where you left off. The game is fairly okay. Not necessarily one of the biggest games to come out in Nick.com, but a lot of people have good memories of playing it, so that's what really matters. It's always nice to revisit these activities from Nick.com and remember all the good times you had with them. Nostalgia can be a beautiful thing. Now hold on a second, I have a phone call to make. So for now, thank you for joining me, I will see you in the next memory.
Hello, what do you want? Hi, I was just calling because I saw that your development team was behind the changes made to Champions of the Chill in 2017. Yeah, I was just going to call and ask why you chose to remove Winx Club from the game. I read that it got moved to a sister network, but I'm not really buying that excuse, so what was the deal with that? Ah yes, Champions of the Chill. I hardly remember that one. But you're right, we didn't remove Winx Club for that reason. Really? Okay then, why did you remove it? Because we don't like you. Huh. Jerks. Who's that? Just some idiot calling to complain. Oh, figures.